Beneath the frozen ground of the northernmost region of Finland lies a discovery with the potential to change the world's future. From nuclear energy to electric cars, these minerals make it feel like a sci-fi future is just around the corner. But, as always, it's not that simple. Let's explore why. All the way up here on the map is a region called Lapland, a land with only one chair for every two people, so someone has to sit on someone else's lap. It's a remote snow-covered corner of Finland, where reindeer outnumber people who live there. Here, the night sky glows with the northern lights almost 200 times in a single year. Oh, and Santa Claus has a house there. In 1985, Finland declared that Santa lives in Rovaniemi, a town just south of the Arctic Circle in Lapland. They even built Santa Claus Village, where visitors can meet with them. You can cross the Arctic Circle line and see his main post office which receives hundreds of thousands of letters from kids worldwide every year. So, it's sufficient to say that most people know about this place because of Santa's workshop, rather than scientific news. But deep below the ice in pine forests is the Sockley deposit. It's a massive mineral geological site that's been studied for decades. It's mostly known for iron and phosphate. We use iron to make, well, almost everything while phosphate mostly ends up as fertilizer to grow our food. However, recently, surveys revealed rare earth elements, niobium, and traces of radioactive metals like thorium and uranium. The possibility of thorium is what made news outlets excited. Thorium is a naturally occurring, slightly radioactive metal. It's way more common in the Earth's crust than uranium. In fact, it's about three to four times as abundant. Scientists love it because thorium could be turned into nuclear fuel with huge numbers as the output gain. A chunk of thorium the size of a golf ball could, in theory, generate as much energy as several tons of coal. It also comes with some major perks. Thorium reactors would produce less waste, meaning that thorium is much easier to contain and safer to use. And it even has an interesting trivia. Thorium was once used in old-fashioned gas lantern mantles because it glows when heated. And that's not all. The Sockley deposit also has other rare minerals that are critical for making magnets that go into wind turbines, electric cars, and even your smartphone. With the right investment, this single deposit could help Europe build thousands of new wind turbines or power millions of electric car batteries. So did Finland and the entire planet just hit the geological lottery? Well, yes and no. Today, nuclear plants don't run on thorium, they run on uranium, the trusty fuel that has been powering reactors for decades. The whole system, from mining to reactor design to handling the waste, is built around uranium. It already provides around 10% of the world's electricity. In fact, in some countries, like France, it's the main source. It works, it powers millions of homes, and the industry knows exactly how to handle it. Thorium does not play by the same rules. It's not fissile, which means it cannot split and release energy on its own. Which is a fancy way of saying it needs a little help to become useful. You cannot just toss it into a regular reactor and expect magic to happen. That would be like trying to charge a Tesla by pouring gasoline into the tank. To make thorium work, you'd need different types of reactors and the system that could support them. One that's expensive, experimental, and not yet ready for prime time. So yes, Sockley's thorium looks impressive. It's full of sparkle and promise. But for now, it is staying underground, waiting for future technologies and investments. But what about those other rare earth elements? Neodymium and praseodymium might be tricky to pronounce, yes they are. But they're hiding inside almost everything these days, from earbuds to the massive MRI machines in hospitals. They drive the motors in electric cars and help giant wind turbines spin. In short, they're everywhere. And then there's niobium. This metal makes steel even stronger. Add a little niobium and suddenly you've got stronger, lighter alloys used in bridges and even rockets. Today, Europe imports nearly all of it, mainly from Brazil. If Sokli were developed, 
Finland could give Europe a homegrown supply. However, again, it's complicated. Like I mentioned, Lapland happens to be one of the most beautiful places on the entire planet. It's one of Europe's last great wildernesses, where pine forests stretch for miles. And digging up all those materials wouldn't be without consequences. Mining at this scale could ruin the landscape, upset Santa, or endanger delicate Arctic ecosystems. After all, we're talking about radioactive elements. It's not just about nature, though. Indigenous Sami communities live in Lapland, so they have a voice in what happens. It's a tricky situation that relies on more research and tech advancements. Until then, what are some other delicate places that could hide thorium? Well, thorium is not that hard to find. It's tucked away in beach sands and mountain deposits. But the coolest place to get it would be from the moon. Back in the 1990s, NASA's Lunar Prospector spacecraft mapped the lunar surface and spotted areas unusually rich in thorium. Now, that's an incentive for speeding up the future moon missions. Especially since our satellite probably hides elements like helium-3, which are incredibly rare on our planet. Mining the moon might be a perfect solution. Big companies will certainly have way less competition. But hey, that sounds like a decent challenge for humanity, given that the moon has no atmosphere, which makes it exposed to radiation and wild temperature changes. So we will see. Meanwhile, let's go back to Earth for another seemingly unrelated discovery. Going down to the deep ocean seabeds, scientists recently found something pretty surprising. While exploring the Pacific Abyssal Plains, they discovered polymetallic nodules. These are potato-sized lumps of metal that are also important for making batteries. But the cool part is that the nodules seem to be releasing oxygen into the water. Scientists call it the dark oxygen. Ooh. Normally, oxygen comes from photosynthesis, which needs sunlight to reach plants, algae, or bacteria. But down here, in total darkness, there is no sunlight. The idea is that these rocks act like tiny batteries. Their surfaces can create very small electric currents and split water into hydrogen and oxygen. Basically, these rocks might be quietly breathing oxygen all on their own. If this is true, it could change how we understand deep-sea life. Some creatures might not just rely on hydrothermal vents or food falling from above. They could be getting a secret oxygen boost from the rocks themselves. Now, research is still new, and some researchers say this oxygen could be contaminated or just too little in volume to matter. But if it's real, it means life in the abyss might have a secret oxygen supply we never even knew existed. Creepy, mysterious, and kind of amazing all at once. It also makes us wonder about life on other planets. If rocks on Earth can make oxygen in total darkness, Maybe extraterrestrial oceans on moons like Europa or Enceladus can too. The universe might be full of secret oxygen factories just waiting to surprise us. Finally, aside from thorium, Finland recently made headlines with another cool geological discovery. Scientists found some zircon crystals that washed into rivers, and when they looked closer, they noticed that the chemical signatures didn't match local rocks. Instead, they traced back to Greenland. This suggests that part of Scandinavia's ancient base might actually have come from there. In simpler terms, it's possible that Scandinavia broke off from Greenland and drifted across the ocean billions of years ago. This unexpected link makes the Nordic landscape a lot older and more interesting than we previously thought. Whether the Sokli deposit could power the future with infinite energy remains to be seen. Each day seems to bring another discovery that inspires conversation and prompts us to learn something new. Who knows what new technologies or hidden resources the next decade will uncover? Now, excuse me, since I've learned his address, I have to write a letter to Santa. I, uh, I'm still trying to get off of his naughty list. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.